Hello Garden fans. This is by far um, the most normal talk title I have ever given, um, which makes me frustrated and angry. Um, but I couldn't come up with anything better than Garden Project Update because I'm going to update you on Garden. <laughs> but I could have called it Why Garden's Great and What's New and Cool and What's Next, because that's what we're really going to talk about, um, primarily with lots of slide about how great Garden is. So I hope you're sitting comfortably. Why is garden great? So what is garden? We probably all know what garden is. Does everyone actually know what garden is? Has anyone come to the complete wrong talk? <laughs> so garden is Cloud Foundry's container engine. I used to joke that it's an open source version of Docker. Um, it's a cross-platform abstraction. So one of the original goals of garden was that we would have an API that we can make work on Windows and Linux and anything else. Originally, it was based on our own code, um, which actually predated Docker, but it doesn't really matter. Now it's actually based on Run C, um, which is the same code that runs in Docker and Kubernetes and everywhere else. So it's just a small piece of glue um, around this shared piece of code that's the same in every container platform. So why is that good? Uh, basically, most importantly, because Garden is tiny. Garden is now this really small, simple wrapper around Run C, which is what we like, because that means it's really easy for us to support and to maintain. And because it's totally focused on Cloud Foundry's use case and not on any other use cases, we can keep it small and simple and keep it optimized and secured for what Cloud Foundry needs. Right? We're not messing around with other stuff when we need a feature. We don't have to plumb it through lots of layers. We just have a small, simple wrapper around Run C. So that's the idea of Garden. This is visually what I just said. So if you think about Docker, Docker is this large blue thing, whale-like thing, if you like. Um, and there's now this little component inside Docker, which has been open sourced by Docker called Run C, which is the container engine right in the corner of Docker. And then around that, there's the CLI, there's the orchestration, there's all of that stuff. More recently, there's work has been started on ContainerD, which is a smaller subset without some of the orchestration stuff, um, but it, doesn't quite, it isn't quite ready yet, but it's kind of interesting. Um, Garden looks something like that, right? So like a much smaller wrapper. It just does three things, really. It's an API, so an API that's exactly tailored to what the rest of the system needs. Um, it has same defaults, which is probably the most important thing. Out of the box, it's configured to run a multi-tenant secure PaaS. You don't need to do anything to make it be a secure multi-tenant PaaS. It's just all set up correctly. Um, and it has a really simple plugin model, um, which I'll talk about later, that lets us do the interesting things uh, in their own projects. So what we're trying to do is create the most secure and the most maintainable um, container engine for multi-tenant platforms as a service. That's the Garden mission. And by default, we want to be secure. Um, but actually, when we say secure by default, we don't just mean that we enable everything that you need to be secure out of the box. We also mean, and I'm quite proud of this, we don't give you options that will make you insecure. There's one flag, which is privileged, that we use so we can test garden inside garden. But apart from that, you can't twiddle things which will actually make your container insecure in a multi-tenant environment. And that's what Garden's about, right? Garden is create me a container which is secure and which will work in a multi-tenant world. I'll talk about some of these security things that we do in a minute. Um, by the way, it's also really fast. Because it's super small, um, it has really low overhead, and it's actually really fast. We <coughs> run performance tests in CI under load, um, we make sure it's always under a second creating containers, and we run comparative tests against the other container engines. Um, and as you probably expect, um, we're quite a bit faster than all the big container engines and a really small overhead over just using raw run C, which is exactly what we want. So let me talk about how we got here. This is like the history lesson. 
That's the only slide with a good animation, by the way. So I hope you enjoyed the good animation. Um, so uh, we started with the DA and Warden. That was the original piece of Cloud Foundry functionality. Right? That was our own custom code. Originally, it wrapped this LXC library. Then we realized we didn't need LXC. It was faster to just call the kernel APIs ourselves. A little later, Docker popularized containers and did some amazing things um, in getting the whole community to learn about containers rather than it just being something we use to build passes. It was something people used in its own right. Um, we then created a new version of, of Warden called Garden, which was our Go version, originally Garden Linux. Um, and then in 20, well, just before 2015, we started thinking about whether we should do a version of Garden that was based on Docker. Um, and if you were here two years ago, you would have seen my talk. Um, if you were here, you saw my talk, right? Um, which was on Garden Docker, which was a prototype we did to wrap the whole Docker in Garden. Because um, actually the Garden API can let you do that sort of thing. Um, but we were hesitant to do that in production because that meant we had a whole Docker dependency, uh, which we didn't really want to have. We didn't need it. It was a big dependency to take in. Um, and then in 2015, Docker released Run C, announced the OCI initiative. So then we had this component, Run C, which did just exactly what we needed and nothing that we didn't need. Um, so we quickly created Garden Run C. That's what's in production today. Um, and that's what's been running successfully for the last year or so. Um, how do we get there? This, so I just want to say quickly, how do we get there? We basically have really good tests around Garden Linux. We ran those tests with the new Run C runtime until they all consistently went green. We ran it in production with half the load on Garden Run C and half on Garden Linux, um, and it worked really, really well. And we, we really only had a very small number of problems um, when we ran them side by side, which we quickly fixed. Um, and so we just got rid of Garden Linux. Um, we've been running on Garden Run C for, I think, about a year now. So um, Garden and OCI. So I think this is kind of interesting. So by adopting Run C, Garden is now much more part of the OCI community, which is the actual community around Run C and around container technologies. Um, we've been able to get Run C to give us some of the features that we needed to do some of the Cloud Foundry use cases. One of the big ones is the create start split, which means we can create a container um, without starting the first process within the <laughs> container. Because in the Cloud Foundry model, we like to create the container and then decide what to run, run health checks, run all the other things inside it. Whereas in the Docker model, you, you, the two things are linked together. So um, we've got agreement to split that up, which makes it much easier for us to standardize the command line API. Um, and recently, we've started to do stuff um, which is actually new within the OCI community. So one of the big things we've been doing recently is working on being able to run the whole garden server without needing roots. Um, which, if you know about containers, is just magic and amazing. Um, I'll talk more about that in a, in a minute. Um, but that's sort of using the bleeding edge stuff in Run C, which we can now do in Garden. So basically, Garden is totally focused on the CF use case. It's really small and minimal. Um, and that means we have just maximum power while also being um, easy to maintain. Allow me to demonstrate. So. Um, some of the things we got for free from Run C. So by moving over to Run C, uh, we for free get now the same exact runtime environment. So whether you're running in Docker or Kube or Cloud Foundry, um, if you do a CF push with a container image, you're going to get the same runtime environment. It's the same exact code that's going to be running it in all of those things. You're going to get set comp out of the box, app armor out of the box, um, all the new PID C group stuff and the ability to use all the standard tooling that you would have with Run C or any, you know, any other container tech. How do you get this? You do nothing, right? This is just for free, out of the box. It just works, right? You can't not have it. We also now um, have a rootless mode, CPU maximums, plugins, and Windows support. And I'll quickly talk about each one of those new features, because they're all really very cool. So rootless. Um, this is really experimental, um, but this is extremely exciting if you're a container nerd like I am. Um, I will try to tell you why it's good even if you're not a nerd like I am. Um, it's good because it's massively more secure, and it gives us much more ways to deploy the container engine. 
So we already have user namespace support. And what that means is root inside of a container isn't really root on the host. Rootless containers means the server itself, the Garnel container engine, also isn't running as root, right? So user namespaces mean your, your user in the container isn't really root. So if you break out of the container, you're still not root. Rootless, rootless garden means if you hack the actual garden server itself, even the garden server isn't really root and doesn't have elevated privileges on the host. It's incredibly cool. Um, that means it's more secure, more deployment options, and it also means we're at the bleeding edge of containers, which is where we want to be, right? We want to be ready to get all the new latest features into Cloud Foundry. Um, how do you use it today? This, you will actually have to do something. You'll have to set a Bosch property. Um, until we get rid of that Bosch property, once it's all ready, um, in the meantime, I wouldn't actually do this in production. It's not actually more secure yet. Right now, it's less secure, and because there's some security features we can't turn on without root yet, but we're getting there. Um, and hopefully, eventually, you will just get this for free like everything else. You won't have to do anything, you'll just get the security improvement. But if you do want to try it out and tell us what breaks, um, that would be awesome. Um, yeah. So, CPU maximums. This is like a long-standing request. People have been asking for this for ages. And we've always had CPU sharing. Uh, that means if you have a 64 meg app, um, you'll get CPU in proportion to how much memory you've asked for. So if you've got two apps on the platform, you can't have one that takes all of the CPU. But historically, that meant fair sharing only when there wasn't enough CPU to go around. So if you had a lightly used box, you could get all of the CPU on that box, which meant sometimes you would get lucky and your app would get a huge amount more CPU than you'd paid for. That's bad for a couple of reasons. It's bad, firstly, uh, because it attracts a lot of Bitcoin miners and things like that, because they can just keep pushing until they get like a fast server, which isn't great. Um, it also means it's really hard to do things like auto-scaling, because you never know how fast the machine you're going to get is, right? Um, and the worst thing is people start to rely on getting more CPU than they paid for. So when they happen to land on a host where they only get as much CPU as they actually have paid for, because it happens to be a busy host, all their stuff breaks and they think the platform is broken. Um, so what we allow now um, is a single property. You can set it in Garden. Um, it's extremely well named. It's CPU quota per share in US. Um, if you set that, um, then we take the existing fair share number and set a maximum amount of milliseconds, nanoseconds rather, uh, that your process can run per 1,000 milliseconds before it will get stopped. So for example, um, if you set it to 100 and give a 64 meg container, that means 64 times 100 equals 64,000. You'll get that number of nanoseconds per 1,000 milliseconds before the container can't have any more until the next slice, right? Um, and this allows you to, to set a maximum. So you can still let people burst and use some of the extra CPU um, but you can make it a little less crazy. Um, this is quite experimental. This is quite new. It hasn't been used massively in production yet. Um, but you can just set it with a Bosch property um, and tell us if you need more or less. So we, we've started out just doing a very simple thing that we hope will fix it. Um, and we're looking for feedback on uh, if that works for people. Finally, plugins. Um, so plugins, we have this pluggable system. So we're a small wrapper around Run C. Um, and then the bits that Cloud Foundry actually wants to innovate on and do different things, image management, networking, alternate runtimes, um, we have a little plugin API. And it's incredibly simple. We just run binaries, right? So we just run a binary and we say, we've created a container. Please configure the network. And we pass the argument to that binary of what the network namespace is. Uh, same with image management. We say, uh, we're about to create a container. Here's the URL. Uh, of what image we want to run in it, please create me a rootfs. And you can just set those as Bosch properties and replace them. Um, it looks like this. So this is a basic diagram. You've got the Garden API at the top. Gardener is our implementation of the Garden API, um, which then has three modules. It's got the network component. Um, it has the image management component. 
and it has what we've lovingly called run DMC, uh, which is the small wrapper around run C, right? Uh, that's the containerizer component. Um, uh, you'll see that Kawasaki is our inbuilt networker. That's like the default out of the box networking. Um, later today, um, you'll see a talk about the container networking component, which is one plugin. Um, there is also Groot, which replaces our built-in image management and does full OCI support with overlay file systems, can run as root. Um, and I'll talk later um, about the new Windows version um, of the runtime plugin, which lets you use a different runtime plugin instead of run C on Windows. So, briefly those plugins, there's container networking, which is policy-based app-to-app -app networking, uh, but it actually supports CNI, which means we now have pluggable, proper container networking. You can plug in your own things um, however you want. There's a talk on that at 2.25 in this room here. Um, there's then our new image management tool, which is Groot. Um, I would like to explain the name of Groot now. Um, we call Garden Guardian internally. The new code is Guardian. Groot is a character um, in Guardians of the Galaxy. Groot is a tree, which you'll find in a garden. Garden RootFS, GrootFS. Get it? Um, so that gives us proper OCI support. Uh, it's based on the latest code. It uses um, containers image. Um, it can pull down all the, the standard OCI and Docker images. Um, and instead of being based on AUFS, which has been a long-running problem for us, it's, it isn't kernel supported, and is our current file system layering technology, it can use both betterFS and overlayFS, which are actually built into the, the kernel, so they're much better supported. One small problem, it turns out file systems are really hard. Um, it doesn't actually work yet. Um, it works great until you run it at scale, um, and then it turns out betterFS blows up and overlayFS blows up. Um, but we're going to get there. Um, just fi fi finding the right tuning for file systems at scale is just really hard. And even though AUFS is awful, um, we know the ways in which AUFS is awful now. Um, so we have all the workarounds. And so when we move to the new file system, it turns out there's all sorts of new things that we have to fix. So we aren't quite there with GrootFS yet, um, but that will come along soon. Finally, um, this is probably what I'm most excited about. So. Um, We've been discussing how to do container support on Windows. Now that Windows 2016 has proper container support, we discussed how to do it, uh, how to have that support in Cloud Foundry. So previously, we had a whole custom version of Garden called Garden Windows, which was just the Garden API, but a total different implementation. What we hoped we'd be able to do because of this OCI support, because we now have a standardized, plugin-based container system, is ideally, since Run C is just a standard in interface that implements the OCI standard, you would hope we could just replace Run C on Windows with a Windows implementation of Run C and have everything work. And I'm pleased to say that that actually is what has happened. So we can now run Garden um, on Windows, um, it all compiles, it all runs, and we just use a different run C, um, a custom-based Win C, um, and I got this message just before I gave this talk. Um, it says, if you're doing the garden update, we've got the rep help passing, uh, CF push should be working soon, which is pretty awesome, right? That's that's exactly what you want from using the standards, right? We should be able to reuse the same code on Windows and Linux, and everything should just work, and the container layer should be abstracted. That is pretty great. Um, what we're doing next, so next, um, this is already available if you go to our releases page. Um, to make it much easier to deploy and use things with Garden, there's a standalone Garden binary uh, that you can just download it and run it on Linux. So it's just an all-in-one Go binary, you just run it and you now have the Garden container engine. We're starting to properly use file system layers, um, so trying to replace some of the droplet extraction that we currently do, which is quite slow, with using file system layers to actually make it faster. And then we're doing some experiments on properly using the OCI image spec throughout the 
Cloud Foundry stack to have some really big improvements. Um, there's a talk about that uh, tomorrow um, in CD, so Grand Ballroom CD, um, about, all the, uh, about how we plan to use the OCI image spec um, to make some really big advances to how the current build pack flow works. Um, this is very prototypey, and we don't know if it's all going to work yet and exp experimental, um, but there's some really cool stuff there. Um, and basically, our, our mission, as we see it now, um, is instead of being about garden, because garden is just a noun, right? It's a little bit of glue code now. It doesn't really do anything. It's just a little wrapper around run C. The garden team thinks now its mission is to use the container tech that exists, use the latest container tech to make the whole platform better. Um, so we're getting the features that we need into run C. We're taking the features available in the container community um, and using them to make Cloud Foundry um, as good as it can be. Uh, there are more talks by me. They are better than this one. Um, there's the office hours tomorrow. Um, my favorite talk I've ever given, just because of the number of Trump jokes, um, which is 99 problems, but a container ain't one, um, which is where I, um, having spent all the other talks telling you about how containers are great, um, argue that you should never see a container again. Um, and then the OCI for build packs talk, which was about how we can use the OCI image spec to make uh, Cloud Foundry better. Um, and I'm at Dr. Jules um, if you want to tweet me. Uh, and with that, any questions? Um, is there any longer term plans to separate out the uh, CPU uh, allocation from the memory side of it? Right, so Garden today actually supports that. Um, but Diego chooses, just for simplicity, to always set your CPU based on how much memory you have. Um, so this is actually a question for Eric. This is actually a question for Zach. Yes, Cloud Controller does it. I'm blaming the wrong person. Uh, so the question is, what happens when you push a Docker image to Garden? Um, the interesting thing is, as far as Garden is concerned, there is almost no difference between a build pack app and a Docker image app. Um, the only difference is how we get the root file system downloaded. Um, so if you give us a Docker image, we use the group component or our internal um, Garden shared component to pull that down from Docker Hub. Um, otherwise, you just give us the path locally um, where the root file system is. Once we've got the path where the root file system is, the rest is identical. So we're just running the exact same code to containerize. And it just tells us the only difference with a Docker image, as far as we're concerned, is where to get the image from. Awesome. I think that's all I have. <laughs>